Good morning YouTube, good morning internet, this is EJ back once again with another narrated art time lapse video. And today we'll be looking at one of my older videos from 2018. Um, the artwork is titled The Bonkers Banshee Sipping on Lemonade. Now I'm not quite sure about the title. Um, the This piece was done for a conceptart.org daily sketch group prompt. And I do believe that the prompt was what I just mentioned, which is Bonkers Banshee Sipping on Lemonade. But I have a feeling that it is much, much longer title than that one. So I could be wrong. I don't, I'm not sure. Um, but anyways, yeah. Uh, let's talk about what's going on in the screen right now. Uh, what has transpired so far. Um, what's going on right now is that I'm working on the background. I'm basically just laying down a bunch of colors, um, a bunch of brush strokes. Uh, no particular reason as to what kind of marks I'm making or as to what colors I'm putting down. It's just really just free for all at this point in time. I'm just laying down something so that there could be a background instead of just it being white. So, and as you can see, I'm kind of just, you know, smoothing things out with the smudge brush, um, or the smudge textured brush. So I'm kind of blending some rough spots in, leaving some uh, rough spots out. But I think for the most part, I pretty much just use the part that has the smoothed in part. Um, I don't think I kept any of the rough parts that we can see right now. Um, so yeah. Uh, but now that the background is done, I am beginning to work on the subject which again the subject was bonkers man she so and i really have no idea where the idea of the bird came from um, and that's part of the reason why i think that the daily sketch book or daily sketch group prompt was much longer than from what i remember and the reason why i think it's a much longer prop is because of the bird like i have no idea where i get the idea of the bird from and i suspect that it's from the title as well but I, again i could be wrong like i said um but yeah instead of just drawing a bonkers banshee just sipping on lemonade i somehow decided to think outside the box and put this banshee on top of a flying bird so that is basically the shape that i decided to make uh i roughly i roughed out a shape of a bird and i knew that i was going to have a character on top of that bird which is the banshee robot um that you saw earlier um so yeah I just decided to make the rough shape of those two foreground characters essentially. And then after I made the shape, I uh, took one of my brushes and did a multiply on some areas. Uh, well, not just some areas, but the shadowed areas. The areas that I know that was going to be dark, I multiplied it. Or I took a brush, put it in a multiply uh, blending mode, and kind of just brushed those areas out to be a little bit darker. And then I did the same thing for the highlights, but instead of multiply, I switched the blending mode to color dodge. And so we have this light uh, reddish area where uh, the light's basically going to be hitting, essentially. And um right now i'm doing the lasso tool uh i think i used the lasso tool to take some parts out uh and to define the bird i think i'm not quite sure because from what i remember i actually used the eraser to define define the bird shape more rather than use the lasso tool but uh it looks like um It looks like I duplicated the layer a few times and then put them all in one layer so I can have a much more opaque 
layer to work on i think that's pretty much just what i did just now um i don't know if i did anything with the lasso tool if i cut some parts out it doesn't look like i did but essentially yeah i duplicated that layer um and i think i might have co also copied merged it and then uh doing uh doing all those transactions i ended up with this one layer that i'm currently working on which i'm blending so uh yeah that's what it looked like happened so yeah i'm working on one layer right now So basically I'm just blending uh, this foreground characters out um, and basically what I'm trying to do is to come up to a base paint. Um, it's been my standard mode of operation. I have this layer that just kind of has colors and shapes of colors that I want to work with that I basically want to sculpt the details out of. So this is essentially what I'm kind of doing right now. You know, I'm trying to get this base paint that I could work with. So um, basically that noise that I created with doing the whole multiply and doing the whole random mech brush, um, all of that was just to create noise essentially that I was eventually going to all blend in into some form of shape um, that I'm kind of seeing in my head. And of course what I'm seeing in my head is what eventually ended up becoming a full picture, which is, you know, like right now I'm blending the back area, which I didn't really work on because I knew that all I wanted to do and focus was the banshee and the wings and the bird's head. It's just pretty much just what ended up happening in the final piece. This is a speed paint, by the way. Uh, it only took me an hour to create this piece. So, you know, I, I knew that I wasn't going for a detailed piece. So I, I left this very, very loose, pretty much. Um, so, yeah. But now that the blending is done, um, I'm not quite sure. I'm trying to remember what next steps that I did because I changed my steps around obviously depending on what illustration I'm working on um, my typical step would be to lasso the final shape and then delete the ones that's not part of the shape but I have a feeling that okay so I didn't do the shape first what I decided to do was to outline uh, was to make my outline my outline sketch to kind of just define the bird some more so Okay, so that's what I did, and this process is pretty much easy. You just pretty much just take a regular old pen and put it on black and just sketch as if you're normally sketching on a white paper. Uh, but instead of sketching on white paper, you know, you're sketching on um, a colored piece, um, essentially. Um, and the colored piece kind of helps guide me, you know, I mean, that's kind of the reason why I blended everything in into this random shapes, because those random shapes are going to dictate where I'm going to create my details, essentially. I mean, a good example of it is the area in the bird's neck. Um, I see that some colors kind of create like some certain shapes. And so I kind of just follow those shapes, essentially, with my um with my pen to create the outline and so basically that's how i come up with details it's just kind of just following the noise um that is created by the random shapes that got blended together so yeah but i mean obviously i still have like a vague idea of the overall shape which is obviously important you know so Right now, I'm just free, you know, I'm just, the details are just freestyle, 
you know i really didn't know what the details are going to be but as for the overall shape i did have an idea like i have an idea of how that bonkers banshee was going to sit on that bird you know i kind of knew what his form was going to be and so when i'm sketching it out you know i'm sketching out the parts that are missing that is not uh, delineated by the shapes that was created initially and you can see that on the left leg like the left leg did not does not have any color in it because it originally did not have colors in it as well as the cup that he's sipping on like that was blank because that didn't have any shapes on it at all but i knew that i was going to have a cup there so i kind of just you know drew the outline of the cup so but yeah um and again like i said you know i meant for this to be a speed paint i didn't really want to spend a whole lot of time on it um so i knew that i wasn't gonna try to fully develop the piece and as i mentioned earlier the part that i was going to just concentrate on for the most part was just the head the character sitting on the bird and part of the wing which is kind of what you see me detail right now So now I'm using the eraser um, to mark out the shape of the bird. Typically I use the lasso tool. That's what I typically do. Um, but for this, this time around I'm taking a different approach which is the eraser. I'm using the eraser to kind of just fully define the bird some more. And I'll just go over all around it for the most part i think i left the back part pretty much unerased uh, i think i left it messy as is i kind of like the mess that all my brush initial brush strokes made so i think i pretty much decided to keep that part but yeah i definitely i definitely took care of the front of the bird uh, and erase some parts of that just to kind of sharpen it some more and it is really immensely refreshing to watch this older speed paint of mine lately for the past I don't know maybe three months to six months or so my speed paints have gotten longer and longer and longer um, my speed paints as of late has been hitting the five hour mark, which I really honestly feel it's too long for a speed paint. Um, it, speed paint by definition is, is such a loose term. I mean, a lot of people think of it in different ways, but when I use the word speed paint, I typically refer to artwork that is done very quickly and most traditionalists 
would be in the camp of like the plain air painters. Uh, most plain air painters would work outside for say an hour or two. Um, that would be like your standard speed paint time. Um, because really, if you work any longer than two hours, you know, the light would have changed. I mean, light at eight o'clock in the morning is so different than light at 10 o'clock in the morning. And obviously, it's going to be even different at 11 o'clock in the morning. So, you know, if I was to go with a traditionalist point of view of what time, the amount of time a speed paint would be, I would have to say the amount of time a plain air painter can paint a scene, which is around an hour or two. Now, this speed paint was an hour. Uh, some of my speed paints before this were around the 40 minute mark, you know, so those all qualify as speed paint Lately, they've been hitting the three hour mark You know like earlier this year they were hitting the three hour mark, which I was fine with, you know It's a little bit more developed speed paint. That's fine But lately the past two or three months it went up to five hours and you know, there's really nothing wrong with it. I mean, the end product is still looking good, in my opinion. It's just... It made me miss this quicker speed paints. You know, I mean... Just as I mentioned, this was done an hour. And... You know, <laughs> an hour to have a finished piece that I like is very, very awesome. You know? And I think that's part of the reason why I, my speed paints have been going up in time to like 5 hours, 6 hours. I, I think part of the reason why is because a lot of my 1 hour speed paints I actually don't like. I have a lot, and I mean a lot of 1 hour speed paints. But only a few ever make it into my portfolio, which obviously this made it into my portfolio. Or is about to be put in my portfolio. But a lot of them are just not very good looking. <laughs> a lot of them I just I don't want to share. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I think that's probably the reason why my speed paints have been going up to like the four hour, five hour mark. You know, just to develop it some more so that I can be interested in it and so that I can like it. And so that I am willing to put it in a portfolio. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe that's part of the reason why. But yeah, watching these older videos really make me miss those one hour speed paints. The successful one hour speed paints anyways. Because it's just it's just really cool to just have a finished product that I like done in an hour instead of, you know, constantly working for some more. So But yeah, that's that's the way it is with artwork though. You know, it's a hit or miss. You know, sometimes you succeed, sometimes you fail. Uh, there's, you know, there's artwork that, you know, just works right from the get-go. And there's one that I have to slave over and over and over just to get to a part where I like it. So, yeah. But, yeah, I absolutely love this bee paint. So, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't have like a deeper impact in the psyche of most people. Most people who would look at it would probably be just like, eh, it's just a bird. <laughs> no big deal. So yeah, uh, subject matter wise or, you know, theory wise, it doesn't really have any significance of any sort. But when it comes to actual paint application and technique wise, I love it, you know, um, that's how I view a lot of my paintings now is that I don't even really think so much of the subject matter. I think a lot more of the paint application and what it looks like. Um, and in this case, I really like how I left the back part of the bird loose and very gestural while the front is obviously more developed, you know. So yeah, um, I do like that part of it. Um, but yeah, now as you can see, I'm, uh, defining the head some more. Um, I think I'm adding some highlights to kind of indicate, you know, the separation of mechanical parts. So like the neck looks like, uh, they're all composed of different parts or different panels, kind of like the way the head is, uh, 
see on the head I'm adding some highlights right there it's just to make it look like hey this is a different panel than the one on top of my eyes or something so so yeah I'm adding the shadows delineating the edges accentuating the shadows and adding highlights um, pretty much what I do during the detailing process and I'm gonna do the same thing too for the banshee but I'm gonna do it very quick and again very loose you know I'm not gonna try to define it so much because again like I said I'm going for a speed paint so yeah That's me adding some highlights on the Banshee robot. And then later on, I'll add some more shadows back in. And yeah, this piece for the most part is almost done. Um, it was done very quickly. And this is it. After I added those shadows and highlights, this piece is pretty much done. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Good night.